Ta-da! Well, how do you do and how the heck are you, my friends? So Dogfish Head just came to my neck of the woods this weekend. Oh, well, darn it. As I just spilled a little bit as I went to scratch my nose. Darn it, I hate it when that happens. So Beer to Drink Music by 2017 Tropical Blonde. 6.8%. I'm going to read just a touch from their website here, if you'll bear with me. Uh, 6.8 percent, 30 IBUs. A release is February, March, April, May. This is uh, well, the end of March. Uh, <laughs> original release date 2017. Uh, style blonde ale. Excuse me. Music has been a part of Dogfish Head since before Dogfish Head, so it's natural. It's a natural fit for a brewery to. I'm sorry. Gosh, my eyes don't want to focus. My uh, bifocals, darn it. That makes analog beer for a digital age to be the official beer of Record Store Day, a celebration of unique culture of record stores and the special role they play in communities. Of course, as the official beer of Record Store Day, we had to create a special brew for the occasion. Now for the second year, that's just what we've done with beer to drink music. In volume two of this celebratory ale, this tropical blonde is brewed with hibiscus flowers and kiwi juice. It's the perfect marriage of beer and music and best paired with some of your favorite tunes. Clocking in at 6.8, beer drink music 17 is a pinkish red brew with forward notes of tropical fruits with hints of berries and floral. So there you go. It does pour very pretty. Uh, yeah, I guess it is kind of pinkish. I really wasn't noticing, to be honest, until I read that. Yeah, I got a slight pink. Kind of a pink on gold, I'd describe it as. Show Me Brewing right near my house. Kind of a small nano brewery that's doing some fantastic beer. It has a... Uh, Grisette, hibiscus grisette, that is bright ass pink. <laughs> this is a very light for me, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of colorblind. Not 100% colorblind. I do see colors, but I, I have troubles differentiating shades. But this pour is very nice, as you can see. Uh, beautiful color, a very tight, dense head. Oh, wow. Yeah, very fruity on the nose, uh, floral as well. Wow. I am sort of getting those berries that they talked about. I mostly picked this one up because I hadn't had it before. I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, 6.8. Um, 30 IBUs. It is $12.99 for the six pack. So it's certainly not cheap. In my opinion, <laughs> uh, I know the price of beer, craft beer, keeps going up. You have to pay for quality time. Yes, I know I have to pay for quality. I get that, but it doesn't mean that the prices have to exceed the market either. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is a specialty beer. Okay, so you know. But but there are IPAs out there from certain craft breweries that want it when you spend twelve ninety nine, thirteen ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine for their IPA. Now I've had those IPAs, I think they're darn good. But are they better quality than a beer I can get for eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine? No, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. Now you may say you like the flavors of that fourteen dollar beer better. Okay, that's fine, but you can't tell me it's a better beer. You can say you prefer it, but you can't say it's a better quality beer because it is not. And that is my issue, man. I hate paying $14 a six-pack for something when I can get something of equal quality that works for my taste buds for 9 or 10 bucks. That's all I'm saying. But this is a specialty beer. You're not likely to find anything like it. And, yeah, you know, listen, they just got here, man. I was going to pay pretty much whatever they wanted for them just to try them once. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, you know, I'm going to spend it one time. If it's good, I'll go back. I mean, if it's, oh, let me let me rephrase that. If it uh, does something special for me, I'll go back. Uh, good. There's a lot of good out there that I don't go back for. 
Uh, for me, my scale is simple to a buy again or not. Just because it's not a buy again doesn't mean it's not a good beer. It just means for, for my taste, for my money, I'm going to go another direction. Well, I buy this one again. I don't know it's too early in this beer. I will tell you it's very different, though. Again, um, I am certainly feeling those berries that they talk about. Uh, tropical fruit with hints of berries and floral. Yeah, I'm getting more than, more than hints of berry, personally. But again, that's probably my taste buds. I, am I getting tropical fruit notes? Yeah, you're going to find some tropical fruit in here. You're certainly going to get some floral characteristics. I mean, that hibiscus, you feel both on the nose and, and uh, on the taste. Tropical fruits. Uh, yeah, again, a, a lot of what you get is going to depend on, on your knowledge of tropical fruits. Now, personally, I don't sit and eat a lot of mango, papaya, pineapple. I've had, I know what those things taste like. I've had them once or twice, but they're not flavors I go to. So, yeah, you, you're probably going to find mango, papaya, pineapple, passion fruit in there at some point. It, it just depends on your taste, uh, what, you know, uh, your, your your memories, what, what you've had. I mean, you can't taste. If you've never eaten a mango, you're not going to taste mango in the hop variety. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna you're gonna interpret it as something else. That's why I hate to tell people they're wrong when they when they get something different. You're not necessarily wrong because you're relating that taste to what you know. It's very interesting though. I've noticed as the more I let this warm, the more I drink, the more that bouquet is able to develop. Uh, you, I, the, the nose just keeps getting bigger and bigger on this thing. It's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, again, um, I am getting now that I've, again, now I am getting more of those tropical fruit notes. It's like an alcoholic tropical fruit punch, kind of. <laughs> Uh, here's the dangerous thing about this. It is 6.8%. I'm sitting here drinking it, trying to detect alcohol, and I cannot. I mean, I, you know, if somebody were to hand this to me and not tell me what it is, if I was just given a glass at a barbecue or picnic, I probably would have made the assumption to 4.5% session beer, session, session ale. Uh yeah, that 6.8 is very deceptive in this beer. It's highly drinkable. Uh, food pairings. What would I pair this with? Uh, chicken. I uh, would pair it with chicken breast. Um, possibly legs and thighs, depending on the preparation. Um, but certainly chicken breast, without a doubt. Uh, if you're having Cornish hen, I think this would be beautiful. Actually, now that I've said that, I would love to take this and uh, marinate a couple Cornish hens with this, with some various other seasonings. But I think the 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 tropical fruits and the floral nature of this beer would really complement some Cornish ham. Fish, possibly, yeah, possibly fish. Uh, yeah, I would certainly, yeah, I could, I think I could eat it with salmon. Now you certainly could eat with any white fish, but I think it would even even hold up to a, a, a big fish such as a salmon. Maybe even tuna. Go big. Go for just 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 go for it, man. <laughs> But yeah, what the hell, man? I would pair this with ceviche. Why the hell not? Uh, <laughs> if I was having a plate of ceviche, why not? I'd drink one of these. Pork. Uh, I don't think I wouldn't pair it with a pulled pork, uh, but I, but I might pair it with say. Uh, um, some grilled tenderloin, you know, a, a lighter pork, sure. But I think fish and chicken would, would, would work best for this. But yeah, you might go with some pork. Oh, baby. So I've kind of run a little longer than I intended on. Bottom line, it's a good beer. Yeah, now, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get through my six-pack here. But my initial reaction is, yeah, I would probably buy this again, if nothing else, to cook with. <laughs> yeah, because I'm having some ideas as I sit here, man. Yeah, I need to go get some Cornish head and some pork and do all sorts of things with this beer. Uh, anyways, hey, I am trying to beer whisper. <laughs> Sorry for losing my mind there for a second. Sometimes I just get off track. 
Uh, yeah, again, you certainly floral. You definitely get a lot of tropical fruit notes. And I had this very cold to start with. Um, uh, but the bottom line, is, even, even though it is a, a golden ale that uses hibiscus, uh, it still is probably a beer best at about 50 to 55 because as I let this warm up, those aromas and those flavors really came out. I mean, the bouquet just grew the warmer it became. So I think 50 to 55, even though you may want to, your, your instinct may tell you to start this colder. It's really going to come to live at about 50 to 55, in my opinion. So there you go. I am John the Beer Whisperer. Prolific beer drinker. Purveyor of wisdom. Occasionally, I get some gems every once in a while. An all-around good guy. I just got to notice something. I was getting those berries that they tell you about. I was also feeling in that last drink just a hint of, of, of cherry. So there you go. Just a little hint of uh, Rainier cherry specific. I'm going to give you a specific variety. I'm reminded me of a Rainier cherry. So there you go. I'm kind of beer is for Abigail. Drink on, drink well, drink with passion. But don't drink at all. 